Hello, good afternoon po ulit sa inyong lahat. Welcome sa ating worship service. Ngayon naman po, tutuloy natin ang ating pagsamba through the preaching of the Word. This afternoon, we're starting a new series. Ang title nito ay Trustworthy. Titignan natin uh, kung sino si God. We will learn about God as a covenant keeper through the lens of the prophet Isaiah. And ang hope and goal natin that as we study, as we learn who God is, through the covenant that we have with Him, makikita natin that, that God is someone who really deserves our worship, our trust, and our devotion. Why? Because He is our trustworthy God. So that's our goal for this series. And so do join us. We're beginning the series this Sunday. And for the next few weeks, ito po ang serya natin. We're still camping on the book of Isaiah. So even during the week, I'd encourage, basahin po natin yung book ni Isaiah. Now, this afternoon, we're going to talk about God as a covenant keeper, our faithful God as a covenant keeper, and we will read our texts from Isaiah 1. However, let me just read from verse 18, and if you have your Bible, open it and read with me. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Lord, please bless the preaching of your word. Speak to each one of us and give us a fresh revelation of who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Actually, kung natatandaan nyo, yung nakaraang serya natin, Salt and Light, nagumpisa rin tayo. And we uh, talked about uh, the same text sa Isaiah 1. Nung nakaraan lang, ang focus natin was verses 15 to 17. Yung mga na naunang uh, versikulo, no? yun yung finocus natin. And we looked at the people. Uh, we looked at the yung case against the people, the sin, uh, the rebellion, kung paano sila. In fact, yung topic natin nun, social uh, justice. And we talked about, we zeroed in on the importance of social responsibility. Kung bagay yung response ng mga tao. Salt and Light, yung series natin. Ngayon, we're focusing on another part of the text. It's the same chapter, but we are focusing on another part. Dati, finocus natin yung mga tao. Ngayon, we will zero in on God and His response. Kasi may indictment, di ba? If you remember, there's an indictment. And how did God respond to that? Now, as we start, I remember uh, telling telling you, no, the last, the, 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 the one of the preachings, that I love court scenes. I love movies that uh, show a uh, court scene. Now imagine, I say a one is like a court scene. Handon yung mga tao, you know, they were being indicted. Merong accusation si God against them. God had a case against them and the whole world, the whole cosmos, the whole universe was witness. Yun yung, yun yung parang plot or setting ng I, I say a one. Now imagine, di ba dito pag may mga cases tayo, uh, lahat mo nakaano yan, parang yung, yung judge, meron yung mga listahan ng cases. Imagine nyo dito kung kunyari isang judge, parang ganito yung scenario doon. God Almighty versus Pinky Katipunan. God Almighty versus Nije de Chanko. God Almighty versus Laika Kabilogan. Parang ganun yun, isa-isa yung mga tao. Parang, so I just want you to imagine that. Now, um, think about that uh, courtroom. Think about yourself walking into that courtroom and your case as a defendant is to be heard. Parang ikaw yung nasa courtroom. No? Imagine nyo lang. How would you feel? How could you even stand before God? That's the picture of Isaiah. There was an action. There was an indictment. There was a case against the people. Now, it was the beginning of the prophecy prophetic word for the nation of Israel and it in it was being laid down yung accusation yun sa pag nabasa nyo no, the first few verses the accusation was being uh, laid out against Israel and God Almighty was the one laying down the accusation and the whole universe is witness yun yung scenario nun as I mentioned earlier now if such were the court scene let's look at the case presented against Israel and this afternoon, dalawa yung titignan natin. Kasi may case, di ba, against Israel. We will look at the uh, unfaithfulness of Israel. And then, yung naghain ng kaso, 
we will look at the faithfulness of God. There are two things that we would see in this chapter, the unfaithfulness of Israel and the faithfulness of God. And out of that, we're going to ask, what can we learn? How do we apply that? How do we apply this scene, this like court case scene in the first chapter of Isaiah in our present day life? In Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 to 3, it says, Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. Children have I reared and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's crib. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. So can you imagine that? Ito yung, di ba yung umpisa pa lang, ito yung nilatag sa kanila. Children who do not acknowledge their parents. Eh, you know, tayo nga ngayon, di ba, we get upset at that. Yung mga bata na hindi marunong mag-honor ng parents nila, we get upset at that. The mere fact that they were brought to this world by their parents is already something. Now, Israel likens the people, or rather, Isaiah likens the people of Israel to children who rebel against their parents and bring dishonor to their name. The verse also talks about... Uh, them being worse than donkeys. Masahol pa sa hayop. Animals, animals know to whom they belong. But the people were clueless. That's what God was saying. And you know, when I was reading this, naalala ko, ako nga may aso. Pangalan ng aso ko, Frankie. You know, when I take Frankie, before the, you know, before ECQ, no? when I take her on a play date with other dogs, pag naglaro yan, kala mo hindi ka kilala. Pero one time, yung parang lalabas lang ako, titigil maglaro yan, susunod yan. Why? Kahit aso siya, alam niya kung sino may ari sa kanya. It's, it's amazing. Pag iniisip ko nga, you know, when I was thinking about that, and then when this was the example that Isaiah, the picture that Isaiah painted, naisip ko, grabe naman pala talaga tong mga taong to. Diba? Parang yung aso nga, alam eh. In other words, masahol pa sa aso. Na, you know, naalala ko rin, uh, my mom, Years ago, when I was younger, sinasabi lang niya, kasi lumaki kami, honestly, hindi kami yung, hindi namin alam yung mga Father's Day and Mother's Day. We were not big on that. And you know, sometimes, my mom was, you know, we were having a conversation about it. Sabi niya, alam mo sa Amerika, ang, ang laki-laki yung Mother's Day. Sabi niya, kasi ang dami rin, ang dami rin doon na ano eh, hindi pinapang, hindi itinutuloy yung pagbubuntis nila. So, you know, when she was talking about that, sabi niya, Kaya it's really celebrated kasi iyo honor mo talaga kasi yung iba hindi nagtutuloy. You know, because of abortion. And you know, I am not for abortion. That is against the Bible. On the side lang ho yun. Pero kinikwento ko lang na yung, yung conversation namin ng mama ko. And you know, thinking about those two, two things, no, yung aso ko tapos yung kwentuhan namin ni mama, you know, this is huge to us. You know, children, uh, you know, we do not, children who do not honor their parents, it's huge to us. Lalo na tayo sa kultura natin, di ba? We do not think kindly of ungrateful children. And this was Israel to God. Di ba? Ito yung ano sa kanila, parang, para kayong anak na nagre-rebelde sa magulang, na ing ingrato, yun yung term no, nung bata ako natutunan ko yun, ingrato, ungrateful. Um, you know, they were living lives in rebellion to God. It's as if God had not, had no part in their history. Parang wala lang, tuloy-tuloy, parang yung pang, ang picture na pinapaint ni Isaiah, tuloy-tuloy lang yung buhay nila, parang wala si, si God. Now, you know, yung picture, it's like may relationship, si God, tsaka yung mga tao, and the people were living unfaithfully to that relationship. And that relationship is like a covenant. Ngayon, Ang pinag-usapan nga natin, di ba, a few weeks ago, there was corruption, there was abuse, and all guys in religious piety. Parang they were religious, but abuse was happening everywhere. The leaders were taking advantage of the people. And, you know, pag tignan mo, that, that we see there, di ba, that's the picture of the unfaithfulness of the people. Uh, the last few weeks, we've talked about that also. Now, if we read closely, um, if we read closely, we look at the story, we will not just see Israel's unfaithfulness. Yes, Israel was unfaithful, but we will also see the faithfulness of God. On the one hand was the unfaithfulness of the people. On the other, we will see the faithfulness of God. Now, 
Balikan natin, why were the Israelites likened to children who rebel? Saan ba nag-umpisa yun? Alam niyo, sa Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3, let me read it. No? Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. You know, pagbasahin yun nang, pagbasahin yun yano. This was not just a call on Abraham's life. This was the beginning of the covenant God offered the people. God offered the Israelites. So makikita nyo kung saan nagumpisa. Si God yung nagumpisa. God initiates, and when we read that, we realize God initiates. God initiates a covenant that we have with Him. It was God who started it all. God offered the blessing as Abraham would follow Him. Diba? Si God ang nagsalita. I will bless you. Go to the land, you obey me, and I will bless you. Magita natin yung two, ano, of the, two parts of the covenant, diba? That we will be blessed as we obey God. And it was a promise for Abraham, not just for him, but also his descendants. It was a covenant of blessing for a people to be set apart for God alone. And you know, what do we learn from that? We can have a relationship with God because He initiated it. We can have a relationship with God because He initiated it. Si God po ang nagumpisa. We are not here because, you know, we, we wanted to follow God. Hindi po ganun yan. Pag iisipin nyo talaga kung ano yung storya ng buhay nyo, you will realize, you will see the truth of what the Bible says. There is no one who seeks God. For all have turned away. Yun yung sabi sa Bible, lahat tayo, nobody was seeking God. Naalala ko, many years ago, decades ago, nung, nung naborn na yan po ako, lumaki ako, hearing everything. But you see, sabi nga nila, you'd miss heaven by 18 inches, the distance from your head to the heart. I did not fully understand, but I am, you know, I'm grateful for everything that I learned. But reality, I was not walking with Jesus. And you know, when I got saved, when I was 17 years old, college student, it was at the peak of my rebellion. I was not seeking God. Diba? Parang, wala, meron po akong gustong uh, sa sarili kong buhay. It was not in accordance with what God had. And yet, you know, to cut the long story short, nung may nag-imbita po sa akin, it was a youth service. We used to call it Student Survival Night. I got invited to that and You, you know, for some reason, gust, nagustuhan, parang out of the blue, may nag-imbita sa akin. Hindi po ako close doon sa nag-imbita. I normally would not have gone. And yet, that afternoon, hindi ko alam bakit. I just went. Nagpunta po ako from UP sa Diliman. May love bus pa noon eh. Hindi ko alam kung naalala niyo pa yung love bus. Nag-love bus ako all the way to Makati. Hinahanap ko po. Na-late nga po ako kasi talagang nawala na ako. I normally wouldn't have You know, look for it that long. But you know, when I entered, I realized, parang, parang iba to ah. Alam mo yun, pagbalik ko po, that Sunday, I heard the message that changed my life. It was a simple message. And I think back, you know, it was a message of faith, hope, and love. And I realized that true hope lies in God. The true hope lies in Jesus Christ. You see, that forever changed my life. But I was not seeking God. I believe God orchestrated things. So I will get to the point where I will give my life to Him. It was God who initiated it. And isipin nyo rin, I want you to think about your own life. When, when did you start walking with God? What were the circumstances? You know, if you look back, I'm sure you will see the hand of God in it. God initiates the covenant with us. And some of you are probably joining us for the first time this afternoon. Siguro ngayon lang kayo sumali. Or maybe, uh, you know, ibang, a few times you've been joining us. And I want you to know, even that is not a chance. Yung biglang madaanan nyo po yung site ng victory, mag-service kayo, marinig nyo to about God initiating covenant and relationship with us, even that is not chance. God is sovereign in His sovereignty and in His faithfulness. He initiates a covenant with us. Nagbibigay po siya ng mga divine appointments para sa atin. And 
if that's you, stay on. Stay on and worship with God because this is not an accident. Now, going back to our, our text, we see God did not just initiate the covenant. In verse 9, we will see what else God does showing His faithfulness. Sabi sa verse 9, If the Lord of hosts had not left us a few survivors, we should have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. In Genesis, we will see why Sodom and Gomorrah were referenced. Genesis 13 verse 13 says, Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. In 2 Peter 2.6, sinabi rin, di ba? By turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. You see, Sodom and Gomorrah were full of wickedness, and God destroyed them. So the people, the Israelites knew the holiness of God demanded a, sep a different kind of lifestyle, a life that was set apart for him. They knew what God uh, required of them. They knew the, what the holiness of God demanded of them. That's why they also knew that given God's holiness, given who God is, that He is God of gods and Lord of lords, given who He is, they could have been wiped clean. And yet they said, you know, you left a remnant for us. You left a remnant for us. And we see that happen all throughout Scripture. You know, there, there's judgment and yet hope comes. God comes bringing hope, you know, preserving a remnant for His people. And that's the faithfulness of God. God initiated the covenant with His people, but we see here, He did not stop there. God does not just initiate, God also sustains. Even in the midst of judgment, you know, God showed mercy to His people. What does, now what does that tell us about God and His covenant with us? You know, we can continually walk in covenant with God because His grace sustains us. God initiates, but He also sustains us. And that is the promise that we see in the book of Isaiah. God is faithful to the covenant that He started with us. He initiated it, but He also sustains it. You know, as, as, we, as we think about that, as we think about Israel's unfaithfulness and God's faithfulness and how God initiates and sustains the covenant. Let's go back to the scene of Isaiah 1. It was like a courtroom and the case was against the people. There was clear evidence they lived sinful lives. They lived in corruption. They hid behind their religiosity but were selfish and corrupt inside. We see that, but we've established that. Now in verses 4 and 5, sabi, A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, children who deal corruptly, they have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They are utterly estranged. Why will you still be struck down? Why will you continue to rebel? The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. You know, we see here how utterly corrupt they were. It's a sickness, you know, their wickedness and twistedness. They were still in rebellion. It, it, it did not make sense at all. You'd say, you know, um, it was just right. Siguro pag kung nandun tayo, no, sabihin natin, tama lang, makondem yan, ma-indict yan at makondem. Mali naman sila eh. Ganun yung buhay nila. And yet, you know, let's go to verse 18. Let's go to the text that we originally read. Sabi dito, sabi ni God, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. You know, the people were guilty as charged. We saw the unfaithfulness of the people. It's, imagine the courtroom. Na present na yung case. Guilty as charged. Di ba, normally, na so surprise tayo pag biglang, ay, innocent pala. Pero, you know, it wasn't, there was no room for that. You know, what was so surprising was the one who laid down the accusation actually now calls the accused and says, why don't we talk? You know, let's reason together. Eh, pag usapan natin at ipapakita ko sa iyo yung kasalanan mo that can be wiped clean. Yun yung parang yun yung parang sinasabi niya. Pwede kang mag-umpisa ulit, pwede kang mabuhay as if that's nothing. You know, parang ang labo, 'di ba? Pag isipin mo, ang labo. But you see, that's that's what God did. That's what God did. We look at the picture. Yun 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 eh, wala tayong magagawa. God does not deny the gravity of the sin. 
You know, when the when the sin is acknowledged, God does not deny that, but He extends mercy. In the midst of you know the people people's sin, in the midst of their rebellion, God can actually extend mercy. All the people had to do was come to God in repentance, receive His forgiveness, and walk in His ways. You know, it's the same with us. God knows our sins. Alam po ni God, yung mga, pati yung kasalanan na hindi natin kinekwento, pati yung kasalanan na ibinauna natin sa limot, alam ni God yun. And yet, He still says, you know, let's reason together. Even though your sins are stained like a murderer's hand, full of blood, they will be as white as snow. It's, so, it's just so encouraging and refreshing for me to realize, oh, nga, no, alam ni God. And yet, He offers forgiveness and deliverance. You know, that's a God that we serve. That's how faithful God is to the covenant. Yung pag nakita natin, parang si God lang talaga eh. Si God lang po talaga. Diba kahit yung sa gitna ng kasalanan ng mga Israelita, sa gitna ng kasalanan nila, lagi, lagi, we will see God's final word is never judgment. There is always an offer of hope. There is always an offer of restoration. There, will, there is always an invitation to come to Him. And as we close, I want us to leave with a reminder in the truth. We can fully entrust our lives to God for He is the faithful keeper of our covenant. We can fully entrust our lives to God because He is the faithful keeper of our covenant. We can continue to trust God in the midst of everything that we face because He is trustworthy, because God is faithful. Yun po ang gusto kong maalala natin at matandaan natin kahit ano man ang harapin natin ngayong linggo we serve a God who is faithful to the covenant relationship He has with us why don't we pray? Panginoon maraming salamat maraming salamat at Ikaw Lord ang faithful You are our faithful God that You are faithful to the relationship Lord, that you initiated with us. Lord, maraming salamat. Punong-puno po ng pasasalamat ang puso namin ngayong hapon. Isipin lang namin ang kabutihan mo. Your faithfulness, Lord, to us. That in the midst of our sin, sa gitna, Lord, ng lahat ng kasalanan namin, Lord, pinatawad mo kami. And to this day, that invitation is still being extended. Marami pong salamat. And, you know, as we pray, Siguro meron sa inyo, nandito sa worship service na ngayon. And I want to invite you to surrender your life to God. Ngayon, iniisip mo, parang, ah, ito na ba yun? Yes, you know, this is it. I, I want to invite you to surrender to God and enter a relationship with Him. And it starts with that. Just, there's an invitation extended. God is extending the invitation. And we receive that invitation as we repent of our sins. I'd like to lead you in a prayer of repentance. Lord, Lord, I acknowledge that I have sinned against you. Lord, even as, you know, the people who were unfaithful during the time of Isaiah, Lord, I acknowledge my own sins and my own unfaithfulness to you. And Lord, I am grateful for the invitation that you are extending to me today. I receive that. May you come into my life, Lord. May you receive me into your presence. Lord, I want, I want that kind of life. I want a covenant, the covenant relationship, Lord, that I, I find in the Bible. I want that with you, Lord. I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to encourage you to send us a message. We will get in touch with you and we will help you in your newfound relationship with God as you walk with Him. Now, I want to pray for everyone else that we may see and walk in the truth that God is a faithful God. 
Lord, I pray for your people this afternoon. I pray, God, that you would enable us to walk all the days of our lives seeing that you are our faithful God. And because of that, Lord, we can live lives trusting you completely and fully, no matter what we face. Increase the faith of your people today. Let us walk honoring and glorifying your name because you deserve it, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Marami pong salamat. Kung may prayer request kayo, i-comment nyo lang po dyan sa section, just sa comment section, type it in and we'll pray for you even after the service. Now, let, let me speak the blessing of God from the book of Numbers to all of us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you.